I sometimes like to say on my tours that if aliens came down to Earth and abducted us, they would probably visit and they'd realize, okay, this guy Abe Lincoln, we can figure out what he did, and Thomas Jefferson, there's a statue of him over there. But what's this big Egyptian obelisk in the middle of the National Mall? So do you know what's going on with that? Yeah, it is definitely very different. Um, Originally, the Washington Monument was supposed to be designed by Pierre L'Enfant, who was the original designer of Washington, D.C. And he comes to a really unceremonious end because he ends up getting fired for um, insubordination, essentially. He didn't want to wait for the government to buy up property when they were building the city. So he just bulldozed everybody's houses and he knocked down barns and shot cows and he ends up getting fired. So he never gets a chance to design the Capitol, the White House, the Washington Monument. He wanted the Washington Monument to be a giant gold equestrian statue of George Washington. So uh, the project languished for a long time, and then in 1846 it was picked up, and the man that won the design, was in, uh, his name was Robert Mills, and he designs this big obelisk. And the reason he picks an obelisk is because of the Freemasons. The Freemasons are, you know, this old fraternal order that a lot of our founding fathers are members of. And Freemasons use a lot of Egyptian symbolism in their traditions. And you'll see it, you know, on the back of like a U.S. dollar bill. You see the pyramid, the all-seeing eye. So um, that's why they chose an obelisk, because it was an Egyptian symbol of light, you know, of like going up to the heavens. Um, But it's much more abstract than a lot of our other monuments. It doesn't say Washington Monument anywhere on it. Yeah, so why why not also include the statue of George Washington if they were going to? Well... Money was a big deal. The original Mills design actually was more elaborate. He also designed for a colonnade to be built around the bottom. And in between each one, he wanted a statue of George Washington. I imagine him in like different poses, you know, like flexing or like looking out into the distance. And they didn't have enough money. So none of that part was ever built. So it's actually much more austere than Mills really intended in the original design. So Mills' design, to me, makes a lot of sense. You know, if we're going to build a monument to someone like George Washington, it's going to have, you know, those different statues and yeah. symbolisms to remember the man. And so it is interesting that we wound up with what we got. Big but, pencil. But now it's so iconic that, you know, dare anyone say, let's finish the project, let's build what he originally designed, there would be such an outcry that it would never happen. Yeah. At least I certainly couldn't imagine it. I don't think it would ever happen. Just adding those 50 flags, that was like a thing in and of itself. There's 50 flags around the Washington Monument, so I think it'll stay as it is. Hey, thanks for listening to this podcast highlight. This is just a small piece of the entire episode. So if you want to hear the whole thing, you can search for Trip Hacks DC in your favorite podcast app or head on over to triphacksdc.com slash podcast. If you like getting these clips, make sure to subscribe to this channel by clicking or tapping on the Trip Hacks DC logo, which is popping up right now at the bottom of the screen. If you want to watch another clip, go ahead and click or tap up here. Or for Washington, D.C. tips and hacks videos from the main channel, go ahead and click or tap right down here. Enjoy your trip!